it's possible you're procrastinating without even noticing you're procrastinating. Our brains are that good at getting stuck in this mental habit. But don't worry, you're not alone. Today, I'll share four super common signs of procrastinating that disguise themselves as work, plus what you can do to get your brain more comfortable taking action. Okay, let's dive in. If you've been listening to the show for a while, you've probably noticed that tech stuff isn't really my strength. Almost as many of my stories are about my disasters trying to get computer stuff figured out as they are about me tripping. Yes, I'm also very clumsy. So it's probably no surprise that a few months ago, I was working on a new project and I was getting stuck in a tech sinkhole. I was putting together a new toolkit to help the busy professionals in our community get their massive to-do list under control and stop feeling like they're rushing around all day getting nothing done. You can check out drnicolebyers.com forward slash toolkit to learn more. Anyway, so part of this toolkit, I was recording these video lessons. I've done a number of online courses over the past few years, and there are a bunch of different programs you can use to record video. Everything from as simple as looking at my iPhone and talking, all the way up to complex setups with microphones, cameras, and editing software. I had everything planned out that I wanted to include in the videos, and I made some slides to go along with my talk. Then I got stuck in that tech vortex of procrastination and didn't even realize I was procrastinating. Let me explain. I started researching the best ways to record these videos. I read some blogs about different software and setups, watched a few YouTube videos, searched in some of the Facebook groups I'm in for online business owners for recommendations from my colleagues. And before I knew it, most of the day had gone by and I was no closer to actually getting these videos recorded. Then I realized I had been procrastinating with one of the sneaky ways our brains procrastinate that make us feel like we're working endlessly researching or looking for the perfect solution, but never actually taking action. And this is sign number one of procrastination disguised as work. We've all been there, right? You've got a new project at work and you're not sure what to do. And there are a bunch of potential directions you could take. Maybe you're setting up a new program for your team or you're working on a solution for a client, and you're not feeling totally confident about what to do first, because it's new, and you don't want to make the wrong choice, right? So your brain says, hmm, I'm not sure what to do. Hey, there's this amazing thing called the internet where I can get my answers. But instead of spending a few minutes deciding on a plan, you go down a rabbit hole of researching all the possible solutions because you're not sure that you found the best one yet. Our brains don't like to make mistakes. That's normal. We want to make the best choice. And when we're not sure what that choice is, we can get stuck researching the best solution or overthinking all the possible solutions or asking everyone you know their opinion and not taking action. There's nothing wrong with a little researching or with some critical thinking. The problem is when this becomes a desire to find the perfect solution, which leaves us stuck. And we end up procrastinating without even noticing because it feels like we're being productive. It feels like we're taking steps towards our goal with all that researching and brainstorming. But what we're actually doing is avoiding making a decision in case it's the wrong one. Sign number two of procrastination disguised as work waiting until the last minute, then rushing to get it all done. Let me be clear. We all need a little fire under our butt sometimes to take action. There's a famous psychology study done a number of years ago that found we need a certain amount of stress or pressure to take action. Not enough stress or pressure, we procrastinate. Too much stress and we feel overwhelmed and we avoid taking action. The trouble is, When we get into the habit of always waiting until the last minute, 
than feeling rushed and overwhelmed trying to get things checked off. Because this isn't a great place for your brain to be. After rushing to get stuff done, your brain says, ugh, that felt awful. Rather than taking that as a message that you want to give yourself a little bit more time in the future so you're not in this situation again, often our brains react to that discomfort by procrastinating more. Sounds counterintuitive, I know. But your brain says, well, that felt terrible. I don't want to feel that again. And your brain associates that feeling with not doing the task, not the actual procrastination problem. Does that make sense? Your brain continues to put things off to avoid doing the thing, then rushes to get it all done, feels bad, and this cycle continues. Plus, this sends a message to your brain that you're rushed all the time. So it makes your brain go into red alert mode often, which burns you out. Sign number three of procrastination disguised as work, doing everything else on your list first and getting stuck in busy work. Busy work is the sneakiest form of procrastination in my opinion, because you are busy, you are taking action, you are getting stuff done, but not the stuff that makes the biggest impact. For example, If I get to my desk in the morning and on my to-do list, I have respond to emails, return client calls, order new office supplies, prepare for our next productivity challenge, my brain knows that last item, prepare for my next productivity challenge for our community, is a lot of work. The other stuff is going to be so much faster to do. So I spend the first part of my day answering emails, making calls, ordering office supplies, and yes, that stuff is good to get done, but I know it's not helping me move to move forward in my career. Getting that next challenge ready for our community is really what moves the needle for me. But it's so tempting to get caught up in busy work because it feels productive. It feels like I'm getting a lot done by spending an hour checking emails, but most likely I'm not really. Yes, I get those emails checked off, then there are just more emails, right? We all have our own versions of busy work in our jobs. If you feel like you're rushing all day, busy all the time, but not making progress towards your goals, chances are you're stuck in busy work. And sign number four of procrastination disguised as work, distractions and urgent tasks. Distractions are a type of busy work. They pull your focus and keep you from doing the productive work that's going to help you make progress in your career. That could be email alerts, colleagues popping by to ask you questions, the printer jamming, anything that pulls your focus from the tasks that actually move the needle. Again, if you're feeling stressed at work and burnt out, distractions disguised as urgent tasks could be holding you up. So what can you do? How do we get our brains out of these procrastination habits so we can feel in control of our time and of our energy? Noticing when you're stuck in one of these procrastination disguises is the first step. Here's my challenge for you this week. Start to notice when you're feeling rushed, stressed, or like you don't have enough time at work. For me, I notice I get cranky, pretty tense, and fidgety. You might feel different. Maybe you feel exhausted, your motivation goes down, and you're reaching for that second pot of coffee. But start to notice when your brain and body are telling you something. Then notice what you're doing when you feel that way, when you start to feel overwhelmed by everything on your plate. Is that task one of these procrastination traps? Procrastination disguised as real work? That work that makes you feel like you're making progress, but really it's just stressing you out? The more we become aware of these habits, the easier it is for our brains to take charge and change that habit. Want some more strategies to stop procrastinating? Check out my free workbook, your insider's guide to stop procrastinating. Five questions and four simple strategies to go from endlessly hesitating, second-guessing yourself, and waiting for the perfect time to start, to getting more done and having the clarity, energy, and focus to take action on your to-do list every day. You can snag your copy at drnicolebyers.com forward slash stop procrastinating. That's drnicolebyers.com forward slash stop procrastinating. I'll put the link in the show notes as well. Okay, let's do a quick recap. Our brains are clever, and they figured out some clever ways to procrastinate 
and make us think we're actually making progress. Usually because that thing we're procrastinating on feels uncomfortable. A project you're avoiding starting because you have no clue what to do first, or a conversation you're avoiding with a colleague because you're not sure which way it will go. But the more you become aware of the times you're procrastinating or avoiding with things like busy work or looking for the perfect solution, the easier it is to start taking action and the faster you'll reach your career goals. Thanks for listening. I'm Dr. Nicole Byers, and this is the Bold Life Podcast.